Well, the first quarter of the year has just ended with the equities markets posting negative year-to-date return of 3.4%. So apart from the month of January, which witnessed an appreciation in the all share index of over 5%, the bears held sway in the month of February and March. Now joining me now in the studio to talk more about the market is Mr. Adedeji Ajadi, the Registrar and Chief Executive at Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers. Good evening, Mr. Ajadi. Thank you for joining us on the program. Good evening. Thank Happy you. Easter as well. Happy Easter. So the, um, how would you assess the performance of the stock market in the first quarter of 2021 and what factors were responsible for the negative market sentiment which was you know we saw mostly in the last two months of the quarter? Yes uh, thank you very much. Um, we started the year on a very positive note. Uh, don't forget we rode on the back of uh, the performance from last year where the Nigerian capital market was rated as the best performing you know, capital market by Bloomberg, 50% growth. Um, January was good because I think we rode on that momentum in, in January and also the expectation of uh, corporate performances and results coming February and March. Uh, but by February, you, we saw an uptick in uh, fixed income uh, rates. Uh, and when that happens, there will be rebalancing, especially from... Uh, institutional investors. I mean, that happened. Uh, and of course, because of that, the, the capital market will take a hit. So there was a little pullback uh, in, 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 in February. Um, improvement a little bit in March, even though it wasn't positive uh, because of corporate results. Um, uh, surprisingly to me, and, and I'm sure to many market watchers, our companies did very well. The corporate re results posted by the, the banks and you know, some of our big companies was, was quite impressive despite the challenges of COVID-19. Uh, so that moderated the potential losses a little bit. And again, just like you mentioned in the report, um, traders will take profit, especially you gained 50% in 2020, additional 5% in January. You see a lot of traders who want to take, take profit and, and that, that, that will lead to some downturn uh, pulled back in the market. I think those are the things we are seeing. So against the backdrop of weak um, economic recovery and inflationary pressures, what is your outlook for the second quarter that we're about to enter now? I, I think we will see um, a lot of volatility uh, coming in the next quarter, uh, especially again because what pulled the market up a little bit recently was the results from the, but that will not come again in this quarter. Um, and unless some positive signals, you know, come from the, from the economy, the macro economy, uh, you, you will likely see a lot of volatility. Uh, but the, the, the point there is that opportunities are there in the market uh, because what this pullback does is that it gives you opportunity to have very solid companies with strong fund fundamentals at very cheap valuations. And so the designing investors will have opportunity to go in at that point waiting for uh, the recovery, which we definitely will come. Okay, so um, the primary segment of the stock market has been dull for some time. I mean, even before the COVID-19 pandemic. What exactly was responsible for this and how can that segment be revived going forward? Oh, there, there's a whole lot uh, to talk about, about the primary market, you know, because uh, the primary market is a market where equities, uh, where funds are raised by companies in the first instance. We have a very challenging operating environment. I think that's where we to start from. Uh, so what do you raise funds for? There's a whole lot of pro a whole lot of challenges in the economy. Insecurity out there, kidnappings, what business do you want to do? So something has to be done about the operating environment to incentivize companies to come into the market to raise funds to do business. This is a very difficult operating environment. I think on, on, until we solve that, you won't see a lot of uh, private companies coming to the for primary market issues. Okay, so um, the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers is currently sponsoring a bill in the National Assembly uh, to replace the CIS Act of 1992, known as the Chartered Institute of Securities and Investment Management Bill. Now, what is the reason behind this? It, 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 it's a long story, <laughs> and there's a whole lot to talk about, but let me just summarize it. The institute was chartered uh, by Act 105 of 1992. Okay. So you can imagine a, an institute chartered in 1992. What has changed between 1992 and 2021? A whole lot has changed. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of things were not anticipated by those who wrote the bill at that time. A whole lot of dynamic changes have happened in the market. 
which should be reflected in what the institute does. New players have come into the market that are not recognized by the old bill. So for the institute to be more inclusive, to bring in people who have foreign certifications, to bring in all other, uh, all kinds of groups are coming out, um, adding their own value to the market, but they are not, they are not in any particular uh, professional institute, okay. like it is done anywhere in the world. This is a very regulated market, especially from the point of view of those who participate in it. So we believe Nigeria, we should, we should tow the same path. We should bring people into the fold of the institute, standardize certification, and ensure that we run with the standard that, that happens all over the world. And that is the whole essence of, of, of the season bill. All we want to do is that we want to be inclusive. We, don't, we want to ensure that there are standards. We want to ensure that quality individuals who have been trained and certified play in this market. We've had a lot of challenges with that over the years. And this bill is supposed to so address some of those challenges. I mean, you've, you've highlighted some good parts of the bill. At the same time, the bill is being criticized by uh, other professional groups saying that it's an attempt to force any individual involved in securities and investment business into the institute. Now, there's also been, uh, critics have also point out to, pointed out to conflict of regulatory interest between the institute and the Securities and Exchange Commission now. How would you react to this, or what do you have to say to clear all of that? Let me tell you, none of those criticisms are correct. That's okay. the truth. For those who want to know the truth, who have an open mind to know the truth, they've asked those questions, we have tried to clarify. The Institute has a very clear role. The Securities and Exchange Commission is the regulator of the capital market. The two organizations have existed together in the last 27 years. If there was no conflict over the last 27 years, where would there be conflict when you now have a new institute? The role of SEC is very clear. Nobody can take that role from SEC. There's, there's an act that empowers SEC to do what it does. There's an act that, that empowers the institute to do what it does. So they, that is the way it happens all over the world. So there won't be any conflict mm -hmm. from that point of view, from a regular point of view. The institute is also not taking over anybody. We've engaged with several organizations, several of the institutes, also um, trade groups, a lot, a, four or five of them have signed an MOU to work with the CIS to, to foster this uh, relationship and develop this new institute. Mm -hmm. We are very open to bringing everybody on board. That is what this institute is all about. And I tell you, this is for the good of the market. This is in place. We can give information for anyone, any group of stakeholders who want to be open-minded, get more information about this season bill. We are willing to discuss with them, and we've been doing that. Okay, so for anyone who has questions, they should just reach out to absolutely, the institute? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. A lot of people have been reaching out. We've been giving them all the information. Okay, okay. I mean, we just wanted to clear uh, that. But then on the account of COVID-19 now, the floor of the stock exchange has been closed. We've been trading remotely for a while now. Now, how will remote, how will that impact uh, securities trading? How, or how has that impacted securities trading? You know, the good thing is that uh, the stock exchange, as if uh, they have anticipated that there will be COVID-19, had started to um, uh, develop a very strong um, IT system, remote trading uh, system over the years. And so, honestly, we didn't even feel it. That's, that's the truth, because uh, most traders are able to trade online. Even most stock broking firms already have platforms that allow individual investors to place their trades online. So over one year now, the floor has not been open. Mm -hmm. Business has been going on. Even our own institute, all our activities, our exams, we just automatically switched online because we've been doing that over the years. And I think that's the way to go. Pandemic or no pandemic, we should be able to operate, you know, um, in, the, in the market. Yeah. Okay, so last month, CIS signed an MOU with Lagos Commodities and Futures Exchange uh, and, you know, to onboard no fewer than about 2,000 stockbrokers uh, to trade on LCFE. Now, can you tell us more about that agreement and what it entails? All right, the Institute is convinced mm -hmm. that one of the critical areas of gap in the capital market over the years has been in the commodities market. And the good thing is that LCFE is one of the players that have come uh, onto that space. Uh, we've been working with LCF right from the very beginning, and we'll continue to work with them. One area where, which is our strength is, is training, certification, capacity building. And so we are working with LCFE on that score to train as many players in the market as possible. 
uh, this, this opens a new vista of opportunity for the capital market and for Nigeria. The opportunities in the commodity space is huge, and we need to tap into it. CIS is fully on board on this, and we want to work with all, all the players in the commodities markets to ensure that we train enough hands all over the country to develop this market. And that's why we signed that MOU, primarily the major reason we signed that MOU with uh, SCFE. Okay, so like, how is this collaboration between both entities going to work? Is it just about trading or is there more you know, about it? Just give us more details about the agreement. Continuous training. It's, okay. it's training, certification, bringing in on board a lot of players into that space because we need people who are trained. We need people who have the capacity to be able to do what they need to do. A whole range of uh, professionals are going to be involved in the commodity space. And the institute is going to be doing that training. It's not going to be a one-year thing. It's a continuous thing that we are going to be doing consistently over many years. Because this, this, this is an industry that is just starting and that will continue to grow and develop. So will the, will the CIS be looking to extend that relationship to other commodities exchanges, for example, the Nigerian Commodities Exchange and AFEX, for example? Absolutely. Okay. We even have that relationship. Okay. We may not have signed MOUs. We have very close relationship with other players in the market. AFEX, we collaborate, we work together, and we will continue to do that. Don't forget, every platform is for stockbrokers. Our members have a right to trade on every commodities on securities platform all over the country. So whether it is fixed income, whether it is commodities, whether it is equities, we are interested in pushing our members to operate in all those platforms because they are certified and qualified to operate on those platforms. So we want to work with every platform. Okay, speaking about relationships now, like we, we know very well that the CIS and the Nigerian Stock Exchange work very closely. And then now we're, we're seeing this uh, relationship with Lagos Commodities and Futures Exchange. You've mentioned uh, the relationship with AFEX and Nigerian Commodities Exchange. But what happens to the other exchanges, the FMDQs, the NASDs? Is there any collaboration between uh, the CIS and these other exchanges? Is there any, should we be looking out for more MOUs? Absolutely. Okay. We, we have good relationship with all the exchanges. Okay. Um, the one with the NS is particularly special, <laughs> you know, historically, because mm -hmm. uh, what we do now, the NSC was doing that. Don't forget also that it is members of, uh, uh, of uh, it is stockbrokers who basically who are the, starters of, uh, of, of, of the NSC uh, in terms of de being dealing members. So that relationship brought that particularly close. Uh, the exam we run now, the NSC used to do it mm -hmm. before, before they, they ceded it to, to the institute. But that has not precluded our relationship with other platforms, NASD, FMDQ. We all work together uh, to foster the capital market. Again, like I said, our members are expected to play in all those platforms because they are stockbrokers. All right, Mr. Jadi, we just need you to hold your thoughts there. And Capital Markets uh, continues when we return from this break. Please stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on the program. Mr. Adedeji Ajadi, the Registrar and Chief Executive Officer at Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers is still with us on the program. Thank so you. just before you know, we go, can we get your reactions to the NSC's demutualization, which is finally complete now? now what do you make of it and you know, how do you think that would impact the capital market globally? Generally. Yeah, I, I like the way you put it. You said, finally, because <laughs> that shows that we've been on this for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, le let me first commend the, the team at the NSC, the president, the executive, the CEO, who have worked assiduously to ensure that this, this has been achieved finally. For more than 10 years, we've been on this. And it's a very difficult, painstaking process, and they've taken it through. Very, very good. They should be commended. <clears throat> so congratulations to them at the NSC. Uh, demutualization is supposed to is, has a positive effect. That's what I can say. Uh, experience from other parts of the world has shown that when exchanges are demutualized, the performances improve because they can now operate more like a business that they are supposed to be. They also provide opportunities now for everyday Nigerians to participate in the wealth that is being created on the stock exchange. So the shares of the exchange will now be tradable and can be traded. So everyday common Nigeria can go 
and buy the stock of the Nigerian stock exchange just like any other. So mm -hmm. that will enhance the opportunity to create wealth, expand, you know, the opportunity for more Nigerians to participate in what is going on in the, in, in the, in the stock exchange. And I, so I think that is commendable. It's an opportunity for Nigerians. Well, we hope Nigerians take advantage of, of that it. opportunity. Well, another opportunity is derivatives trading. Where are we right now in terms of derivatives trading in Nigeria? And how long will it take us to catch up with, you know, other markets that are actively trading derivatives? Again, this is another uh, aspect that we've been working on for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. From the information I have, I, I, we should start this year. That's what the NSC has promised us. Um, trainings have been, have been going on to, to prepare participants for that market. So we believe with demutualization that that could, should kick off before the end of this year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, these are the kind of instruments we need. And these are the gaps that we have had in the market over the years, um, creating greater risk in our market. So for instance, derivatives are risk management instruments that ensures that even when the market is experiencing a downturn, you have some other instrument to mitigate those risks. We didn't have that for so long. And so when we have, anytime we have crashes, it's always total and complete devastating for the market. So now that we have this, it will help Nigerians to be able to manage their portfolios better, portfolio managers to use this instrument to mitigate the risk in the market. And ultimately, it also enhances opportunity to make more money because derivatives on their own are opportunities to position yourself for potential gains in the market. So speculators will come in, edgers will come in, all cap categories of players will come in to make the market deeper and more vibrant. That's what derivatives trading will do. And it's, I'm very happy again that that is already coming on board again. Well, we'll be looking forward to when that would be done successfully. Mr. Jadi, thank, thank you so much for your time on the program. Thank today. you very much.